Hello and welcome to this free mandolin lesson aimed at advanced players on how to play the wonderful Honeysuckle Rose by Fats Waller and Andy Razaf back in the mid-twenties this was written. It's a jazz standard, it works really well in a, a sort of a gypsy jazz swing guitar style which is what we're going for today and hopefully we'll have something that sounds like this. Everything we talk about in this video is included in a free PDF which is linked below so if you download that you don't have to learn any of this by ear. The first thing we need to do is learn the melody. So um, if you look in any jazz fake book, uh, the A part would be written like this. Three, four... So everything's one, two, three, four, one. Everything's on the beat. And that's a perfectly valid way of writing it. It's still a lovely melody. But if you listen to how Django plays it, there's a great video of Tommy Emmanuel playing this. Um, it's all pushed. It's all syncopated. There's loads of uh, sort of grit and blues and, um, yeah, just delayed syncopation added to really make this sound like a swing tune. So instead of... On the beat, it sounds like this. Three, four. So, down, up, up. Very careful of your pick strokes when you're learning this, advanced players. The up strokes give you the syncopation. It's it, You don't really want to be playing notes off the beat as up strokes, because, as down strokes, because if you play them as down strokes and they're off the beat, they end up sounding like they're on the beat. So you lose the syncopation if you get your pick strokes wrong. Um, there's also hammer-ons and slides. So the first one is a hammer-on. Second one's a slide. That's just because I like doing that. You can play those however you want. So for advanced players, I'm just going to dive in. Let's play this A part round a few times. Uh, the triplets. Play that however you want. It's just a cool little way of... Uh, it's not in the original, but it's a good way of doing the repeat. So I'll stick the metronome on, play along. Here's the A part for Honeysuckle Rose. Uh, one, two, three, four. And then the B part is quite simple comparatively. It just got uh, four minims or four four notes worth two beats, and then and then a similar pattern. As mandolin players, I guess we could tremolo those. Turn the O into a seven, and then. Maybe I'll try that now, see how it sounds. But let's just play that this B-pop. Let's do it twice, but I'll recount us back in both times. Same speed. You don't repeat the B-pop, but we'll play it twice now. Just see so if you've had two goes at it. One, two, three, four. And if we try again. And then just like many jazz standards, it follows the AABA -A -A format, so you just play one more A part and that's your full tune. We'll not play it in full now, we'll do a big jam of it at the end, because um, I want to move on to the chords. The chords are where this tune really gets interesting and is a real challenge. Uh, it's taken me a few days to get this under my fingers, so it should be a good old challenge for any advanced player. I don't want to talk through all the theory behind every chord because this would turn into a 45 minute TED talk and I don't want to do that. I just want to give you the shapes. 
show you a little bit of where I've been thinking, and then we'll have a playthrough. So the first four bars, the first four measures, just switches between G minor seven and C seven. And bear in mind, uh, chords have been the hardest bit because um, chords, like someone said, I've read on the internet, uh, when Fats Waller will have originally written this, chord inversions become actual chords and then extra notes become... So you could find a hundred different ways of playing the chords. I've picked my favourite, the one that fits best on the mandolin and the one that fits best to a gypsy jazz style arrangement. So if you don't like them, it's not my fault. Well, it is my, it's absolutely my fault, but just feel free to change them. So our first four bars, G minor seven to C seven, it's the two famous jazz two five progression because we're in the key of F. So G minor seven is the two and C seven is the five. There's a neat way of playing that on the mandolin. So you've got three, one, three, resolving to two, one, three. All of these charts are included on the, on the PDF link below. So make sure you have that in front. So you just need to move one finger. It's the second half of the A part where it gets difficult. So you've got F, F over A, so we just change that bass note. And then a B flat six, where you just add a G to the B flat, B diminished, again, so we just, so just got the bass note rising by one, and F over C. So in those four, those, uh, those four chords, you have a bass that, bass that effectively goes, That's what we, that's kind of what we're going for in this. You want chords that link together. You don't want to because you could, in theory, have like an F here, then an F here, and then a B flat here, and then your B diminished down here. So you could, in theory, be jumping up and down the neck, but that doesn't give you a neat little sort of linear chord progressions, which is what you want in sort of gypsy jazz style guitar. So if we just try those uh, five chords around a few times, the F. F over A, B flat six, B diminished, and F over C. So a one, two, three, four. So F, F over A, B flat six, B diminished, F over C. So if you listen to my rhythm, I'm kind of just doing two per chord. So one, two, three, four. F, F over A, B flat six, B diminished, F over C. And then it would finish with an a diminished, D7, that leads you back to the G minor 7. So. so let's let's try a full A part together. We're going to play it a little quicker. This is 70 BPM, technically 140 BPM. We're going to do the whole rest of the lesson. So uh, do slow me down if this is too quick. There's a cog function down here. So you're now looking at... That speed. And if you hear my rhythm... I'm sort of doing da 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 da. So down down up down down up down down up down. That's the rhythm I'm going for. So let's try an A part together. Actually, let's try two A parts. A one, two, three, four. Here's that run. F F over A B flat six B diminished F over C. Like I said, chords are where this tune is difficult. That took me a few days to get under the fingers and be able to say them out loud as I, as I play them. Uh, the B part is a little more simple. It goes to an F7. And I really like this shape. Five, seven, six. And then I stuck for the same B flat six shape. Because there's a G7 that's very near it. It's, it's very similar to a B diminished. So that's what nice, a lot of these chords cross over. And then, C7 just in its normal position. So let's just try that B part together. I'll stick the metronome back on at 70. Um, and we'll just have it once. So it's two bars. So it's quite a lot of each chord, less movement in this. So just keep that bounce going. Here we go. Uh, one, two, three, four, F7. B flat six. G7. C7. If you wanted more interest in that B part, what you could do is just move between different inversions. So if you've got an F7 here, 
you got an F7 here, and then you got G7 here, and then a G7 here, uh, you know, and then a C7 here, and a C7 here. So you could work out where other chords are, other sort of F7s are, and do a measure of F7, then a measure of F7 in your, your inversion. That would create the movement. So you could do something like F7, B flat 6, G7, so a different G7, C7, so a different C7. That's one way you could make the B part a bit more interesting, but I'm not going to do that. Now it's time just to finish this lesson off. We're going to have a jam through the tune. I'm going to give you lots of opportunities, so we're going to play it twice through. So we're going to go A, A, B, A, 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 B, A. I'm going to split screens. So I'm going to have half playing the melody, half playing the chords, staying at 70 BPM, because I don't think we need to, it's, it's a nice tune at this speed, to give you plenty chance to master the melody, master all the syncopation, and then master those difficult chords. Best of luck. One, two, three, four. That's it for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed playing along with Honeysuckle Rose there. Um, it's a great tune, great fun to play around with. Hope you have a friend or a family member you can play this with because it's great to play with chords as well. And we do these free lessons every month. Please hit like and subscribe while you're here and head over to mandomike.com for all the other free lessons we've ever done. We'll see you next month.